society. Like, when I first saw the trailer for this movie, I thought it was like a, an April Fool's job, a jab at Kite from a different angle and in movie. We truly action movie adaptation. That's right, somebody thought it would be a fantastic idea to take literally the most banned henti series ever created and throw some live action actors into it and turn it into a big screen movie. We truly live in a society. Like when I first saw the trailer for this movie, I thought it was like a, an April Fool's joke or like a parody or something because I, I genuinely couldn't believe this existed. I mean, for Christ's sake, fucking Samuel L. Jackson is in this goddamn movie. Look, I love Samuel L. Jackson. I love everything that he's in. He's a fantastic actor. And I know in interviews, he said that he's loved anime and henti and all that kind of stuff, but God damn, dude, really? And for some reason, this movie is like readily available on Amazon Prime Video for some reason. Like, I'm not sponsored. I just wanted to point that out because I thought it's that's a very strange movie for Amazon to invest in. But y you do you, boo boo. So naturally, my curiosity got the best of me. I mean, seriously, how well could possibly someone take the most banned, controversial henti of the 90s and early 2000s and turn it into a somewhat decent, fantastic, or even great live action movie adaptation. Uh... Not very fucking well. Calling this 2014 film an adaptation is kind of the same thing as calling a McDonald's a restaurant. Like sure, from the outside, it might look like a restaurant, but once you enter it, it's pretty fucking far from it. And listen, my boys and girls, I've seen a lot of live action anime adaptations in the past. God, I've lived through so many of them. But I would have to say that in all of my career, Kite 2014 might possibly be one of the worst offenders in the genre. Like this movie fucking sucks. Not only did it completely change the story and setting that the OVA was set in, but it also included characters and entire plot points that just straight up didn't exist in the original. For starters, in the film, there is this crime syndicate called Emir, which takes children from the streets and sells them to flesh cartels. That never existed in the handy. Meanwhile, there's this street gang that the Emir hires to kidnap children called The Numbers that just look like a bunch of rejected actors from the Mad Max movies. Also never existed in the handy. But the worst offender, the absolute worst thing that they added to this live action movie, which basically completely destroyed any logic that this film ever possibly had, is this thing called AMP. Essentially, it's this drug that Sawa takes to fight the PTSD she has as a cause of her parents getting killed in front of her. By the way, this drug, again, never fucking existed. But the one other side effect this drug causes is that it acts as a memory cleanser and basically makes the user temporarily forget about their past until it gradually wears off and the NAM flashbacks kick in again. In other words, Sama forgets everything about her past experiences and friends, including her parents, for a brief moment so that she can compose herself to act in these killings cold-heartedly? May I remind you all, Kite is a revenge story. The entire reason why Sawa is out there with a gun in her hand, killing people to do the biddings of her masters is so that she can eventually pick up clues that will lead her to the killer that truly killed her parents to avenge their deaths. So why in the hell would you include a plot device in your movie that completely negates the entire point of the movie. Like, I couldn't fucking believe it. Like, that first scene where she goes back to her room and Akai gives her this fucking drug and she starts zonking out, forgetting her memories, I was just like, dude, what? What are you doing? What? The point of the story is disappearing in front of my eyes. Not only does it make this film's plot super confusing even for a fan of the OVA, but it also drags out the movie way too thin because Sawa keeps fucking forgetting the reason why she has a gun in her hand. Not to mention, without giving any spoiler material away, that a lot of characters that originally die in the OVA are kept alive for some reason. Like Sawa goes through this entire film killing people, just overkilling people in the most ridiculous comic book type of ways. And yet she keeps the main bad guy alive at the end of the movie because 
I don't know, like, she still has a human heart or some shit. Also, can we talk about the fact that one of the most unique elements to the Kite franchise, aka Sawa's weapon, is barely fucking used in the movie? Like, she uses the gun in some of the more notable scenes from the OVA, aka the opening elevator scene and the toilet fight scene, but the rest of the time, she doesn't even have the gun with her and instead is slicing up bitches with a box cutter. Like, looking back on this now, there really isn't a single scene that they managed to perfectly recreate from the original OVA series. Like, the opening elevator scene, the old woman is still alive for some reason, and the detective picks up a bullet that is supposed to have exploded. Hello? That's like someone picking up a roadside bomb that's fully intact and goes, Yeah, this just exploded. Can you believe it? The bathroom fight scene, which, by the way, is one of the most visually stunning fight scenes in the OVA, turned into this really bland and almost comedic scene that has zero attention whatsoever because you don't know who the fuck most of these people are for half the time. The showdown scene, where where in the OVA, Sawa finally confronts her parents' killer in the sewers, which results in a really powerful and gratifying death scene. In the movie, it just becomes this sappy, dragged out, Dragon Ball Z-esque staring contest, which, again, results in the bad guy not even dying. And I kid you not, the movie literally ends with a flashback scene of young Sawa and young Oberi running through an open green field while Sawa is dragging through the sky a kite. <clears throat> oh god, just saying that surface level metaphor almost made me throw up. It's like the director got the original VCR and was like, wait, why why did Umetsu call this kite? What what does this have to do with 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 a kite? Think, damn it, we have to somehow link back to the dumbass audience watching this movie why this movie is called a kite. Uh Hey, hey, uh, you got any kites lying around? Can you can you just kind of fly them up as like a metaphor for her memories or something? And whenever she injects the, the drug that makes her lose her memory, just make the kite disappear from the window? It's painful to think that that conversation probably happened. I mean, look, I'll give the movie credit for sticking to its gory, dark aesthetics that the OVA had. And, you know, as, as much as I am complaining and couldn't believe it, Samuel Jackson's acting was actually pretty decent, but that's really all the praises I can give to this so-called adaptation. I mean, Rotten Tomatoes literally gave it a 0%, which is probably more brutal than anything you'll ever see in this movie. It's such a shame because I guarantee that the number of people who went to the cinemas back in 2014 saw this thinking, ooh, this is based off an anime series? Well, I've heard this thing called anime was pretty freaking cool. I, I know One Piece is a cool thing, so this might be cool as well. Who probably then came out of the cinemas really fucking disappointed, probably never expecting anything good out of the world of anime ever again. Even though they're missing out on a pretty historically significant and decent in my opinion, 90s OVA, which is leagues better than the movie they probably just watched, even whilst having illegal material within it. <sighs> but look, I'm, I'm definitely not here to just shout and whine at how crappy live-action anime movies are. I think we've all seen enough videos on YouTube of all sorts of different live-action movies sucking and how the anime is superior and all that kind of shit. So all I really want to say in this video is that yes, even though Kite is technically the most banned henty ever created, and it does have some pretty sketch material in it, I still implore you to at least give it a go. Especially if you are really curious to see some amazingly executed and choreographed fight scenes and action scenes, which still to this day look fucking badass. And if you just want to experience something that is so poignantly specific, to that era of anime. I feel like a lot of 90s OVAs especially are very much slept on by the anime audience of today because a lot of them think that it's just old, it's uh, outdated, it's just gory and brutal for the sake of being gory and brutal. And look, yes, while a lot of them definitely do fall into that department, I still think it's somewhat of an interesting and very unique time period in anime. Like again, you know a 90s OVA when you see one. Like, am I saying that the Kite OVA is the most fantastic anime series you'll ever watch in your life? <laughs> Absolutely fucking not. But I hope that at least people will be able to kind of appreciate it for what it is, regardless of if you end up finding it offensive, immoral, or wrong in any sense. And just understand that yes, while this may be the most banned henti in the history of henti, it is also somewhat of a cool artistic piece of entertainment. Bottom line, conclusion for this research piece is that 
Anime is fascinating. It's kind of cool that now we have the technology and advancements to be able to go back and watch these very timely pieces of animation to really get a sense of what the underground landscape of anime used to be like back then. And I feel like for me personally, I'm just getting started on this journey as well. I, I mean, there's definitely a side of anime that I feel like I haven't explored enough of. And if I can find some more interesting things on it, I definitely want to share it with you guys as well. Because trust me, while there is a lot of cool underground hidden 90s OVA stuff out there, there's also a lot of shit out there as well. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be able to bring my Dr. Plenty of Henty expertise onto this channel once again in the near future to be able to talk about it with you guys. But in the meantime, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about anything I mentioned in this video down in the comments below. If you have seen Kite, whether it's the remastered version, the uh, the original director's cut version, the mini spin-offs and sequels, or God forbid, the live action movie, then let me know what you think about it. Do you find it offensive for the sake of offensive or do you find some kind of artistic integrity behind it? And if there are any more weird, strange, like what the fuck types of anime or henti shows that you would like me to research and dissect and talk about then leave your suggestions either down in the comments below or follow your boy over on Instagram and Twitter as well and leave me your suggestions there and as I mentioned at the beginning of this video if you would like to watch the As you were talking earlier, I could literally see a giant bead of sweat. Because I've got the fucking sun staring at me and we don't even fucking have the AC the on. Pri the price that we, you know. If in water spray, let's go. <sighs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Trash Taste. I don't know what episode number this is anymore because it's probably going to be out of order anyway. I'm your host for today, Gant, and joining me once again are... The boys, you know who they are. What are you wearing, God? <laughs> <laughs> I just okay. It's 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 summer now. Okay, I need to bring the summer energy. Okay, I'm like channeling every like dad doing a barbecue right now. You look like if Trevor from GTA Five got a tan. <laughs> <laughs> you look, look, look like that with the one too many camera lenses. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, I don't know what he's getting up to with those lenses. You know what I mean? Ooh. Dad that goes bird watching. <laughs> yeah. play, play. Do you really need a 500 millimeter lens that's like this long? Like, is there a, come on, come on. Plays GTA Vice City once. Okay, I've, I've got goes it now. Goes to Miami once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but uh, how are you guys in like, surviving Japanese summer. Like I'm how not. hot is it today? Jesus. It's like uh, 35, I think. Or well, yesterday was 35. Yeah. yeah. You know what, let me start off with something. I okay. hate it when you can't complain about the weather where you're from. It's like, you know, what? I, I said on Twitter, I was like, I can't, I'm dying, man. It's 35 degrees. And then yeah. someone replies like, <laughs> it's like 42 here. And I'm like, that is not something to be proud of. You no. live in a fucking, like I, the actual sun. I like fucking, why are you bragging? I fucking hate that shit. Like no matter how hot it is where you are and you, you could be fucking dying in the Sahara desert or something you get to you get to like the nearest town you're like fuck man i just survived the sahara and someone from texas or somewhere and be like oh how hot was it how hot was it <laughs> you didn't measure it you didn't measure it why do you measure it huh? <laughs> Boy, it's hot where i am you little bitch no because what i've realized okay i've i've like living in japan has made me change my opinion because before, what? <laughs> okay, so before moving to Japan or before like moving it's out of totally England- It's totally unrelated. Like, well, no, <laughs> actually, it's not totally unrelated because before moving to Japan or moving out of England, my favorite season was summer. Okay. Yeah. I was, I was, we discussed summer this in the podcast before and we were Have like, we? yeah. Uh, or maybe it was just yeah. like off camera. But I think it was I remember, off camera. I remember yeah. we were like talking about, because I think you and I both like the winter. Yeah, like yeah. much, much more. No, winter's worst season. Lots of, no, fuck off. Win winter's worst season. Maybe this should become a conversation that we have every single year, the summer turns around and everyone's gonna be like, you guys spoke about this <laughs> already. I'm like, it's in my head, shut up. No, because like, I I didn't realize that uh, it's like summer wind, uh, summers in England are actually pretty good. And that's why summer was my favorite well, season. How hot right? does it get in England? It's like 25 degrees okay. Celsius. That's not summer. <laughs> yeah, just, but that's the thing, right? That's the thing. No, it's, no, it gets hotter than that, Go on. It gets hotter for like summer, one, the week. Summer, one week. The summer before we left, right? Yeah, yeah, but that one week is pure hell because the UK, we don't have air conditioning. It just doesn't exist. True. In homes. Yeah, the one time I went to the UK, I, it was during that week. It's yeah. horrible because, yeah, it yeah. you know, at least in Japanese summer, it's like, oh shit, walking outside, fuck, this is, it, it's it's way worse, but you can just go in any any building anywhere, and you're like, oh, cool, just instant hot. They've got hit. the they've got yeah they've got the AC running at full like full blast, like it's, it's good. But it's in like the UK, it's, you, the you have no escape in the UK. Yeah, it's like yeah, maybe sure. the gym has AC, the supermarket probably has it, but like that's it. Like when you go home, you're like, <laughs> put on the TV. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, because like, what do you do to cool down in the UK? Have like nine fans on you. So, so you do have fans. <laughs> yeah, but fans don't do shit. Yeah, fa fans, fans don't do shit. Fans are like- uh, Fans just dissipate the hot air. Fans are placebos yeah. of, of like, a, you're like, yeah, it's definitely doing something. You're like, why am I still sweating so much? Huh. Like, I It disagree. doesn't because I, it, all it is is just taking the stagnant hot air and just moving it around, right? <laughs> yeah, occasionally I just like, you go up to it, you know, I put my shirt over the fan yeah, and yeah. I'm like, this is true cooling. That's, that, that's, that's the best feeling. That's the I, I, maybe it's an, a nostalgia <laughs> thing for me because growing up or like spending my summers in Thailand, uh, you know, um, in Thailand, we would try to save costs as much as possible, mm. you know? So like the AC is always like the last resort. So that's like when we're literally like dying of heat stroke. Yeah. Any other time it's just like, come on, you can survive with a fan. So like I, yeah. I spent most of my like Thailand experience being cooled down by a fan and AC was just like, okay, if we don't put the AC on, we're probably going to die here. So it's, it's I, I think that's why it's like kind of nostalgic for me. Like mm. I, I kind of like the fan like I kind of like the feeling yeah, of the fan yeah. just just on me, but I admit, like, if you're not used to it, like, I felt sorry when you visited, you and Aki visited us in the UK because mm. you, <laughs> you had to you had to sleep in my room, and we that was like there was one fan <coughs> in there. That, there was a single fan in like my entire house, and like Joey, you can have the fan, <laughs> and I was like, I don't think it actually did anything for it you. Didn't do anything. <laughs> I was butt fucking naked in your bed. I'm like, I'm still dying. It sucks. Yeah, it it doesn't help, and it doesn't get yeah. cool during the night. It's the fan, the, yeah, I get like the whole like fan being nostalgic though. Because like I have that exact same thing at my oh, yeah. grandma's. Suffering old is nostalgic for me. No, I, at my, I love at, being at my grandma's old place <laughs> in the middle of nowhere in the mountains. Yeah, yeah. we didn't have AC. It was just because the house was too big to have a single AC unit. Yeah. yeah, and like also all the doors were always open, so it was always with a fan. Yeah, but is it's nostalgic? Is it good memories though? No. <laughs> <laughs> My like ten ah, years old. I love just dying yeah, slowly. God, yeah. so I, remember, I remember the time when I almost died of heat stroke <laughs> in my grandma's house. Good times. <laughs> no, but I, like, you might be confusing nostalgia with like PTSD. I like I like the feeling of I like I prefer the heat the feeling of summer over winter, like any day of the week. I don't know. I'm just Why? I'm, I'm just depressed in winter. Winter's just like even even like dying in this heat, I still prefer what I'm experiencing now experiencing now to winter. What what happens to you in the winter? Sign. Yeah, we, what, yeah. What happens? Bro? Winter's just the worst season. It's like a fucking Wait, Game Winter's of Thrones character right winter. now going on about this it shit. Is, like, it is. It's like. the worst season. Okay. 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 You, I think it's like scientifically proven that people are less ha people are more happy with more sunlight. I disagree. Right. I, th I, th I think it's literally more healthier for you to get more sunlight because you are literally happier seeing sunny, more sunlight. But there is sunlight in the winter. Yeah, there's, there's like barely any sunlight in the winter. And okay, here, here's, here's the thing that depresses me the most, okay? Yeah. Especially if you're working a nine to five job and you have to commute to work, you wake up. It's you wake up maybe 7 a.m. or whatever. If, if you have to commute long, it's like 7, 8 a.m. Yeah. You wake up, it's dark. You go to the office at nine and it's still just like the sun's just rising. I love that. You stay- It's so fun. No. Yeah. Isn't it great? It feels like you beat the morning. Yeah. It's like, because yo, okay, you I'm, stay, I'm ahead of it. All you right, stay okay. inside, you stay inside literally all day. You're just in the office with artificial light. You go out, it's 5 p.m. and again, it's dark. I like that. I like the night. Well, how can, like, how how can you not, like how can you not want any sunshine in your life? I, I, just, I you know, most of the time I have my curtains closed. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I, it's too hot. Oh even, my in my, even in my office now, I have them closed all the time. And like the second thing, every, everything's dead in the winter. There's, there's no color at all. You look outside, everything's gray, everything's drab. How can you be happy with like zero color? I don't know. I, I, just, I just think you're a, you're a boring person. <laughs> <laughs> like, like li literally, the only thing to look forward to in winter is Christmas. Like, I'm pretty sure I don't, they invented. I'm pretty sure they invented Christmas because if they didn't have Christmas, like everyone would just have nothing to look forward to. Objection! No, no, no. I'm from Australia. We didn't have such things. <laughs> okay, I've never been to Australia. <laughs> no, it was it's it was like this. And every, for me. Everyone knows that, that Christmas was invented by Coca Cola. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> yeah. It's the same hours. Um, <laughs> there was there was no Christmas before Coca Cola. Everyone knows that. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. It's it's fun. It's cozy. You know, you get to it's, yeah. It's, it's cozy. It's, you get to also you get the most drip in winter. You know, like I agree. Okay, that, you get no drip in the I, summer. I, I, I wouldn't be you wearing this. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be yeah. wearing this drip in the winter. Yeah. Okay. You, get the, you get the best drip and you get the best sleep. I yeah. The, true. yeah okay.
Oh, dude, the sleep is clean. Yeah. Oh, no. Sleep, sleep is... You crack the window open a little bit sometimes. It's kind of chilly. Ooh. Nice. Oh, it's no. like you're kind of like... It's kind of like just... It's not cold, but it's like a little bit like, oh, okay, maybe I could, you know, yeah. put something light on. But the moment you hop in that bed and you put that blanket over you and you're just wrapped in a warm cocoon, there's like... I'm unstoppable. The sleep is on my side now. And you just get the best fucking sleep. True. Yeah, the mornings suck. But yeah, the for, mornings do but suck. But for me, all the mornings suck. <laughs> I can't wake up in the morning, so it doesn't make a fucking difference for me. Okay, the only thing I could say, I will say is that I can wear turtlenecks in the winter. Exactly. That's, that's, that's Would there be Steve Handjobs without winter? It sucks because you, you, your options are so limited in the winter. It's like, I, you can't wear, uh, sorry, the summer. You can't wear more than one layer yeah. ever. Like. A jacket? Oh, well, that uh, that sucks. No, I love jackets. Jackets are so fun. No jeans. Hoodies are gone. Jumpers are gone. Yeah, jeans. I wear jeans still now, but I'm I'm yeah. dying. But that's because I hate shorts. But that's but that's but that's why I like British summers because what I realize is that British summers is just like a comfortable like it's it's a comfortable temperature yeah. when, most of the when, time. Pre global warming, yes, <laughs> <laughs> it was good because you know this this didn't used to happen. I, and, and it was never like this in the UK where it was yeah. that bad. I, I remember like, we we'd always like, complain about British summers to be like every like every British person I've met is just like oh you haven't experienced British summer. It's like really. It's it's it rains sometimes. It's cold sometimes, and I'm just like, it's like it actually slaps compared to other summers I would compared say, to other places. Yeah. I would have agreed with you until like two years ago, when for some reason two years in a row we just had horrible heat waves mm. that just ruined the summer for me. Because it was always fun in the UK. The best part about it is I like it in summer when the day is hot and the night gets cool. Yeah, but yeah. in Japan it doesn't get cool. No, it night. does. No, I think really. it does. No, in compared to like compared to now, like because you know it's like what. 2 p.m. right now. It is yeah. like the hottest time of the day right now, right? Yeah, yeah. But compared to that, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah carry on, carry on. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll but just... compared to that, when it, you know, the sun finally goes down to like what, like 8 p.m. Yeah. Maybe. And like around like 9 or 10, it's like, it's pretty comfortable. That's that's the kind of weather where I'm like, okay, I'm really comfortable. I can't concentrate with you. <laughs> I can't. Can, 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 we're, we're gonna cut. <laughs> Max! You all right? What's wrong with you all of a sudden? I don't know, guys. I just want to suddenly ride a mech and battle lot of people to prove that I'm the best mecha pilot ever. How can I satisfy this sudden urge, you guys? <laughs> Well, I'm glad you've asked. I've got just the thing for you, Garn. Mechorina! It's the new casual mobile game shooter on Android and iOS. Hop in your mech, play a game or two, cause some chaos, and be out in just a few minutes. Anyone can play, and you don't need to be a pro gamer to have some fun. I've actually tried it out, and I really like the Guardian mech. You can shut down enemy abilities like shields or stuns, and it forces the enemy to completely reload their weapons. With just a push of a button, the enemy is donezo. That sounds OP as F. It sure is gone. <laughs> My favorite mech is the Panther. It has the ability called the Stasis Barrier. Put down an invincible wall that blocks enemy bullets and slows anyone that passes through it. If you like to maintain a distance and snipe down your enemies, this mech is for you. That sounds like a very cool mech. An even better gun. No. No. Arena no. sent us. What is that? A box. What are those? Well, open it up, Joey. Open, open it, it up. up. What are you waiting for? All right. First of all, we got to scan this QR code. Once you scan nice. that in, yeah. we have these character cards Ooh. right here. Oh, okay. Look at that. Oh, I'm in like oh, the, the room. <laughs> Like May Lee, How did you get that? It's actually kind of cool. <laughs> so apparently there's a poster in here oh, okay. that you can also scan. Oh! Oh, that looks cool. That actually looks cool. Well, while you guys are doing that, let me uh, check out some of the other things inside this box. Oh my God, this thing's so heavy. So I assume this is a Mecarina coaster. Man, that's got, so that's, that's got some weight to it. <laughs> it's like a birthday card, but it's like, it's, it's, it's not only that. It's like a legit screen. Oh my God. What? It's like an actual tablet inside and it just stops when you close it. Let me what? see that. Let me see that. Let me see that. <laughs> Let me see that. Right, ready for it? <laughs> That's actually so cool. Oh my God. <laughs> we have also uh, what looks like to be the Mech Arena art book or a little uh, art pamphlet that shows all of the concept art. I guess you can just keep the tablet because there's even a charger inside of yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. I think Wait, for what, we, I, for what I assume is the ta tablet. I think we just literally just got a free tablet. <laughs> oh, and by the way, that's not the coolest thing that's in here because there's also one more thing, if I can even get it out. Hell yeah, let's get it out. We got yeah. a little figure. Ooh, look at that. Oh, a Mech wow. Arena figure, look at now that. Now you can finally get in the robot. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, and also we've got the Mech Arena t-shirts as well. Oh yes, where's Ooh. my t-shirt? Nice, clean t-shirts. Where t -shirts, are please. our t-shirts? Crew, throw us a t-shirt, a Mech Arena t-shirt. 
Yes. Assert dominance on the mechs with these Mecarina t-shirts too. I'm in the Mecarina. <laughs> Mecarina has just launched globally. They're running a huge celebration event in-game right now with loads of awesome events, as well as a great login reward program, which you definitely don't want to miss out on. It's completely free to play right now, and you can use the link in the description or scan the QR code here to get one black carbon skin, 300 A coins, 50,000 credits <gasps> to help kickstart your game. And if you're lucky, you might even get to team up with one of us and get to play a game or two together. I'm getting in the robots right now. Back to the episode. But like, I like that. I like having as much, as I said, as much sunlight as possible. And I just, I feel like the best, like my favorite time period of the entire year is about like, what's what's the word? Like dusk, summertime, yeah. when like the sun's setting, it's about 7, 8 p.m. and you're just yeah. watching the sunset. Man, you, you feel like a fucking anime character because it's just like, <laughs> it's just, you know, it's 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 that fucking scene where you're just like, where the- Bullshit, do you In, in the every sun? opening where like the, the protagonist is watching the sunset and the wind's just blowing. How often do you- You are not breeze? standing how, out yeah. how, on how, your how, fucking how, balcony being uh, like, how, the fu how often are you watching sunset. the- Yeah, how often are you watching the it's sunset? It's Star Wars. <laughs> Is that so? No, yeah. sh shut the fuck up. No, it's anime. How? Shut the fuck that's up, Navi. Like, it's like not that Star scene Wars. on Tatooine, right? Where he's no, like watching the, the sun go down. How often? How often are you watching the sunset? Honestly, that's why I love my balcony. That's why I have a hammock out there. No, I, no, you fuck off. You're not watching the sunset every day. I'm not, like watching the, it. I'm not watching it every day. But that's but like, like the hottest time of the day, in my opinion, because you're getting that like direct fucking sunlight. No, the hottest on your time face. of the day is fucking now. I can't stand out there for it's, like it's 10 hot, minutes. It's hot until the sun goes down. <laughs> like the moment the sun rises, it's the hottest time of the day. No, I'm, no, I mean, I don't know, man. I like going outside and I don't want to have to fucking, you know, shed away my life expectancy to just go outside. Yeah, I, I guess that's why for me in Japan, I think my favorite season is probably spring. For me, it's the autumn. Autumn? Yeah, Winter. like around like October is probably my favorite time of the year. Just because it's like, again, you have that, you know, variance in drip, right? You can, yeah. you can wear a jacket if it gets a little bit colder in the night, but you can take it off and, you know, rock a long sleeve, right? But it's also not so cold that it's excruciating, but it's not too hot either. You know, it's, I, I feel it's like kind of comfortable. I feel like that's Winter. the same as spring though. And I like the, I like the whole, have we talked about Hanami at all? Like the cherry I don't think so. I mean, like, so I, I, I mean, you, you know, you, you watch anime, right? You know what cherry the blossoms cherry are. Blossoms. You know what fucking cherry blossoms I, I are. I will lie. I was slightly disappointed to find out that cherry blossoms are only around for like one week and yeah. then they fuck off. Cause I'm like, hold up there. And all the anime all the time. What's going on with that? <laughs> yeah, they film all the anime in the same week. <laughs> I realize yeah. it's like a cult in Japan. Like they, they're obsessed with this, the, the anime, like everything revolves. When anime's coming up, everything is anime. Yeah. Like, well, yeah. Everything has to become cherry blossom. It's like everything, everyone just joins like a well, call well, of duty. Because there's a really like extensive history. Right, right, right. Yeah. But it's like, it's nuts. Like it's, I, I understand why it's an anime so much now, but when I got here, I'm like, wow. Literally everything is decorated. Like, like it's a call of duty gun skin. It's like, <laughs> Like everything, then every it doesn't matter what it is, it gets a cherry blossom skin. I mean, not yeah. gonna lie, man. Like a good it's hanami cool. is fucking dope. It's yeah, good. yeah, but it's, it's good. It's, it is disappointing. It's only one week. Yeah, it's and a then really what if you're like busy? You got shit going on that week. You're like, you shit. Wait till next year, right? <laughs> I, I did miss hanami this week. Yeah, this year, this year. I would. I'm, oh, sorry, sorry. This I, year, I didn't, I didn't yeah. do anything this year because I, 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 I totally forgot. I didn't know when it was coming. I, and then, I had one of the best hanamis this year. I rub it in, Joe. Yeah, fucking hell. Because we went to fucking Hakone for it and oh. like all along the Hakone River is just like yeah. rows and rows of sakura trees. Do you wanna explain what Hanami is to the viewers? Okay, so Hanami literally means flower watching yeah. in Japanese. So it's, it's basically this kind of, I wouldn't even say it's like a festival. It's more like an event that happens. Isn't it, isn't it even a public holiday? No. I feel okay. like it's a mutual agreement amongst everyone to get drunk in the park. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. kind of what it Pretty is. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. But it's, yeah, it's, it's it. like, because the soccer are only around for about a week, and some, maybe sometimes not even a week, like yeah. a couple yeah. of days, yeah. uh, people go out and like celebrate by just sitting under a tree, having a picnic under the soccer tree. Do you it's think it's fucking great. Do you think it's worth, because I know a lot of people who are like, I want to come to Japan during that time. Do you think it's worth coming to Japan just for it? I think, I, I think if it's the first time you come into Japan, I think it's worth. Yeah. I think now because we've lived in Japan for two years, we're kind of like, <clears throat> we're kind of like used to it. But I feel like seeing Hanami for the first time and seeing like all like the cherry blossoms just like falling off mm. the trees, and you have like the ground is literally covered in cherry blossoms, yeah. like everywhere. I think that's a pretty cool like a couple of weeks. Feeling. Definitely just nodded to you saying <laughs> that right now. It's like, no, oh, it's like in the anime. <laughs> like you literally walk through a park, and it's lit. It is literally like every fucking anime scene where like yeah. you, the fucking yeah. cherry blossoms. Yeah, the like, cherry blossoms are everywhere, like, fluttering down. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Still looks dope. It looks dope yeah. as fuck. I like. I, 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 I don't know what it is in Japan that just is like so aesthetic, but it's just it's just the perfect yeah. aesthetic. I mean. 
Japan is like kind of aesthetic all year round, but I'd say like the most aesthetic is probably yeah. during yeah. the Sakura season. I'd, I'd say if you are going to do it, definitely get out of Tokyo because like yeah. every single Hanami place in Tokyo, like every single park that has the cherry blossom yeah. trees is Just packed rammed. to rammed. Yeah. Like yeah. you, you will be like, because we managed two years ago, we did like a small one. Yeah. And we had to get like a corner of dirt <laughs> in the park right next to the road. Yeah, yeah. Like it was the only, sp literally the only spot left in this Wait, massive park. Where did park you guys there. go? Like Shinjuku? Or no, no, no we, we're in, in uh, Saitama. Yeah, in Saitama. Oh, in Saitama. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right, right. And yeah. it was like, it was rammed as well. Yeah, so yeah. it was so full. Because what, what people normally do here in Japan is during the cherry blossom week or season or when they're blooming, uh, yeah. people go to the park, they get like a kind of like a picnic area mm. um and then they just get fucking pissed in public yeah. right. right it's, it's great I, i'd say go like when you come to japan definitely do like a week in tokyo and then if you if you you know if it aligns with the hanami do mm. a week somewhere else yeah. where you can then go and celebrate the hanami yeah i feel like doing because you can't really explore japan in one week i don't think no, no. you can't you can't I mean, explore not. tokyo in one week yeah yeah true i feel I've, I've been here for like two years now and i've barely explored japan <laughs> <laughs> but how's hanami in like hakone you said Oh, I mean, it's great because it's like, I mean, Hakone is still, you know, very much a tourist destination, yeah, 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 but yeah. I mean, compared to like <coughs> Shinjuku Gyoen or like Yoyogi Park, it's like- Yeah, you don't get any space at all. No, absolutely no space at all. And I mean, like, I, I guess as well, like in Hakone and a lot of places in Hakone, they've definitely like positioned a lot of like uh, onsens and like ryokans and stuff like that yeah. mm. around the Sakura. And yeah. like around all the aesthetic parts of Hakone. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was great. I mean, like we we stayed in like a, an Airbnb that was overlooking uh, like a bunch of like Sakura trees on the lake. And yeah. in the distance you could see That's Mount cool. Fuji. And it was like the most like aesthetic fucking Hanami that I ever had. And I was like, <laughs> you know what? It's it's kind of worth to go all the way out there sometimes to just like get a little bit of peace of mind, right? Cause otherwise yeah. it's just be like, you'd be rubbing shoulders with the person next to you being like, look at, look at the pedal over there. Oh my God. Yeah. No, it, it wasn't the people, it was like the fucking kids running around. I mean like yeah. getting pissed is great. Getting pissed with like a bunch of like five, six year olds running around you like playing football or whatever. True, it's, true. It, it, it's, it's not exactly like the best kind of vibes to get pissed yeah. drunk. Mm. <laughs> if you're sitting like where I am now, you are probably like this close to someone as well. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Someone else is like mat and picnic set. But you say you stayed in Airbnb. Have you stayed in many Airbnbs in Japan? Um, Not really. Yeah. I mean, cause like 90% of them got fucking axed. Yeah, so for the Olympics, uh, the Japanese government changed the the rules around mm. Airbnbs, basically just gutting them yep. and making yeah. it so that you had to make it, you had to follow a lot of, but they basically made it so you had to follow hotel rules. Like yeah. you had to have like the fire escape and like the floor lit up to the-, to yeah. the It's, they, they made it, they basically made the rules impossible on purpose where you couldn't turn a profit like yeah. reasonably. Bas basically, cause I have stayed in an Airbnb. Yeah, I stayed in one as well the first time I visited and it was yeah. super cheap. You mm. could get like, what do we get? Me and Alan got the Airbnb for what? like. It was really cheap, like 150 bucks. Yeah, but it was like a really, really small room, I remember. But it was right in Shinokubo. Oh, remember. Was, was that the one? Yeah, it was the That Shinok was the one I got really sick in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what you threw up in? <laughs> what I want to know. Okay, so this was like, I think the first time you'd been to Japan, That was my right? very first time. Your very first like time. Almost and three years I was ago, so I confused. I just yeah. turned up in this place. I, yeah. I had the instructions for this Airbnb that I didn't understand. I had my luggage and I was like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. I was so confused. <laughs> like, yeah. other and, side of the world. And of course, Connor flies over. And the fir very first thing we do, uh, once Connor and Alan come over, is that uh, we go to karaoke and we stay all Nice. Well, no, we weren't going to, right? So what happened was is no, that- I took you guys to an izakaya for the first time. Oh, so yeah. I was only going to meet, because you guys were like, oh, we're too sleepy. You're probably just going to go to bed. Mm. And yeah. then I think you, me and Jerry were like, well, sit. Well, I, I think, because it was my first time going to Japan, I was yeah. like- <laughs> so I was, I was like, like, finally, oh. I can show this. I was like, no, no, fuck this. I'm not resting. Let's go <laughs> yeah, and get yeah, drinks. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, so, I was like jet lagged. And so was Connor, I think. Uh, I mean, I mean, you were jet lagged, but you were, you, were running off, you were running on the excitement of- yeah. Of course, being in Japan for so, the first time. I was like, time. Joe, show me around. Let's go. Let's yeah. go drink. So then Jerry took me to a, a, like a very uh, like- I, I took you to a kin no kura and yeah, it was during like, the weekday where they have a hundred yen beers. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, Connor was, mine was just fucking blown. I was, I was, was like, like uh, a dollar? Yeah. I was like, this is insane. This is like 60p. <laughs> this is like uni <laughs> prices. Right? No, not even. <laughs> uni prices don't even get this low. This is, this was insane. <laughs> This is a beer, right? Like yeah. legit, yeah, like a legit beer, yeah. And, and then, uh, yeah, we were drinking, and then while well, me and Joey were getting drunk, uh, yeah. I think they were gone, and uh, we we had just landed, Alan and we were like, they yeah. were like, you know what? No, we don't want to miss out. So then they came and mm, started drinking, yeah. and then we went out to karaoke. Yeah, and then Joey we stayed. And we stayed. Then I, what and I got very sick. <laughs> what, what, what I want to know? <laughs> what I want to know? Because uh, I know Joey. Joey got uh, very sick, if you know what I mean. I had to stay around your place. Yeah. Um, who slept on the floor? 
Alan did. Alan did. <laughs> uh, dance editor. And so this was November? Yeah, no, yeah. November, yeah, yeah. No, January. <laughs> I felt so bad. <laughs> it was it, like, basically it was fucking freezing. Yeah, it was really cold. <laughs> and we had to have the AC running in the room. Problem was, is that there was a door. There was literally no room for anyone else to sleep in this room except for two people. Yeah. Mm. Because um, I remember going to your place. I'm just like, how the fuck did you fit three people in here? It's literally a shoebox. Yeah. And yeah. Then, so basically, Alan had to sacrifice his bed for me. And he slept in the <laughs> and hallway. He slept on the hallway. Alan, the tallest motherfucker. Yeah. yeah. And by by hallway, it was literally like just a single like very <laughs> like he it was slept on the floor. It was like a human sized corridor. Yeah. You could not like fit anything more than just like a fucking. Human and it was in like there. it was like minus five. <laughs> it was a was really like cold. Shivering. Yeah. He was just like like I because uh, I wasn't aware uh, that. Alan had, you know, given up the bed and slept Wait, in the hallway. You were, you were, yeah. I was, <laughs> I was yeah. out. I was yeah. like throwing up all night. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't until I woke up that morning <laughs> and I, I kind of came to and I was like, where the fuck am I? <laughs> and then I saw Connor in his bed on the other side. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm in their Airbnb. And I, I was like, where's Alan? And then I just saw this like lump <laughs> yeah, in the like, hallway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, like, yeah. Just like, just this uh, lump of like blankets. He was so cold. Yeah, yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. is that, how, is he dead? <laughs> <laughs> he literally slept in like he's, the uh, fucking shivering hallway he, for me. He's that one friend who's like the nicest guy when you're like sick or like when you drank too much, he's always yeah. got your back. I, yeah. like, I, th I threw up one time and, he, and even though he was drunk, he cleaned it all up and I just went back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> that was the uh, very first, yeah, time. first time I hung out. With yeah, him. you hung yeah, out. Yeah, first us. time I met him as well. Yeah, first yeah. time, first time, first time you guys met, right? Yeah, and he cleaned up my my me throwing up. <laughs> Absolute chat out. What a, what well, a that, that's chat. how I know. Like from that point onwards, I was yeah. like amazing friends with him because I was like, this guy's got my back. Yeah, <laughs> he clearly cleaned. Cle no one else will do that. For me. <laughs> I would never do that for someone. I'm like, I'm I'm, I'm going back to bed. Yeah, yeah. you can yeah. deal with this tomorrow. I remember, I remember it was like kind of like a house party we had in England where yeah. we kind of like rented out an Airbnb. Um, and just like caught I, up I with friends. Like, yeah, and, like you, and you were like the new guy then, Yeah, I was like right? 20 as well. So I was still yeah. like, yeah, let's drink way too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I remember Alan telling the story of like, I think everyone was passed out and it was just you and Alan awake and you guys was like sleeping on the sofa or something. Yeah. And then like, I think he made eye contact with you and you made eye contact with him and he just started laughing and then he just watched you. And how you just like looked at him laughed and just <laughs> chundered <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> that sounds like it. That sounds I, I remember, cause you, 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 what was it? You made some drink with like really budget energy drink. And that's uh. like, uh, and th from that day oh, on, boost, I, boost. I, yeah, I swore never to drink budget energy drink. Even, <laughs> even energy drink is bad enough, but the budget yeah. one where it's like, 50 cents for two liters is like, what? It's, just, it's like brake fluid. Like no one, like, of course you're gonna throw up drinking that stuff. I'm, yeah. gl I'm glad I did, cause I didn't have to digest yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. But, but Jesus. Fucking yeah, we, 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 have, we have a mate from home uh, who's now like discovered a new cocktail is what he calls it. It's not a cocktail. Mm -hmm. It's literally like, okay, tell me how disgusting this sounds. It's boost. So a boost, so boost budget energy, energy so budget Red Bull, yeah. uh, boost and red wine. <laughs> oh my god. That's oh Jesus. Does he have like a functioning like taste buds? And I'm or? just like I thought we grew out this in university, man. That can't be. Not, not even uni students <laughs> stoop that low, dude. Like I think if you did that in France, you'd be deported. Like Yes, Rick, I'm calling you out right now. It's disgusting. Stop trying to get me vile. to drink it. That's so vile. <laughs> yeah. Oh. What, what would I even taste? Like, could you even taste the energy drink at that point? Because red the 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 flavor of red wine is so overpowering. I, I feel know. there's some things where even if even if that tasted amazing, I'm like, no, this is this <laughs> morally is, wrong. This is too broke for me. <laughs> like, this is so broke, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. I just don't want to partake in it. <laughs> you can be broke. <laughs> nice, nice follow up. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's not poor. <laughs> it's broke. It's different. Broke is a mindset. <laughs> <laughs> poor is a lifestyle. Poverty and being poor is your you are that's just, your financial just situation. Just don't be poor. Just don't being be poor. broke is, is the mindset of like I'm gonna live like an animal and I, you know, I don't, I don't partake in that, you know? You can be rich, but be broke at the same time. <laughs> Listen, the reason why- If you're homeless, just No, 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 that, that's poverty, God, that's different. There's okay. a difference between poverty and broke. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Big difference, God, come on. Like, to, like, there's a difference. Uh, trying to get me in a corner here saying being poor is bad. I mean, yes, it is, Garn. You want me to say? <laughs> I mean, you're not doing a very good job of fucking like, like <laughs> supporting sure, your I'm argument. Sure it's not argument my you're trying to make. Not my problem. It's like being like, right. oh, there's a difference between being <laughs> ugly and unattractive. No, you, <laughs> you can clearly afford red wine and you can clearly afford energy drink. Why would you mix them? That is like that is you're making yourself broke on, for no reason. You know, uh, is that broke? That's broke. That's broke. I don't, I don't drink energy drink period anymore. I don't know at what age it was where I was just like, man, Red Bull kind of sucks. Doesn't do anything for me anymore. Actually, yeah. you know what? I drink those. I don't know if it counts. Is it an energy drink? The uh, or I'm on C. 
Oh, uh, yeah, that's kind of weird. I, I don't know if I count that as an energy. I love those things. Yeah, those. it's like a vitamin drink. It's a vitamin drink that's definitely not healthy. Uh, but it's in the same like section as like all oh, the Red you mean, Bulls and you shit. Oh, you mean the Japanese ones? Yeah, it's like a glass It's like a glass thing. It's got a really satisfying pop. Yeah. Like uh, you pull this metal tab and it really, yeah. a really <laughs> nice pop. Oronami yeah. Ishii, I think Oro- it's called. Yeah. Um, it's this on screen. I don't know what. Definitely recommend. If you if you kind of like sweet drink, I, I don't know who because I don't really drink energy drinks, but I love this thing. Yeah, it's so tasty. I feel that works better than an energy drink. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's placebo, but yeah, I mean it definitely tastes <laughs> a lot better for my yeah. body than a Red Bull. That's I, sure. I, th- yeah, I, I think. I don't feel awful after drinking that. Yeah. yeah, I think it's because now it's gone to the point where if I have an energy drink, it's literally going to make me unable to sleep for that night. And it never used to be that way. Normally, mm. I could like down five energy drinks or whatever and like be fine the night. Well, see, I have the opposite problem. I don't. I don't get anything from them anymore. I don't That's because you drink like fucking five cups of coffee yeah. a day. I'm not yeah, fucking maybe. surprised. Maybe. <laughs> I, I can quit any time, Can, I can, can you? I can quit any time. I just said want. every drug out <laughs> <laughs> I can stop any time. Yeah. It's fine. Just replace, it, just replace coffee with energy drinks, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I quit coffee. I normally just drink a lot of tea when I stop drinking them. Yeah, but tea also has caffeine. Not, in not yeah. that much though. Doesn't tea have more caffeine? I think I, I tea, tea like on its tea uh, without uh, like the tea it like itself. If you would just eat tea, yeah. But oh, no, like the tea leaves. Yeah, yeah. yeah but because oh. your tea, if you would just <laughs> eat the tea leaves. Oh, okay. Like if you would just eat it, yeah, you'd be taking more caffeine. But no one does that. So you're, <laughs> the way you said that was so <laughs> eat you know tea. I, you know what I mean? But it, British people be like, <laughs> <laughs> it's not a drink. It's a meal. Yeah, eat tea. Scrumptious. Ooh. <laughs> sure. If you just like fucking just like. You know, powder the coffee on your food or whatever. Get yeah. a caffeine yeah, fix. True. <laughs> well, what age did you start caring about what you were putting in your body? <laughs> I mean, I still don't care. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> probably start thinking yes, about that. Yes, you do. Fuck off. Okay, I, I care when I can feel the effects. Does that does that make sense? Does that make sense? <laughs> no. Yeah, okay, yeah what, I guess so. What do you mean by I'm, what? I'm, like, you mean like the immediate effects? Yeah, like if like if, oh, I have a tummy ache immediately afterwards. But I probably shouldn't put it in my body. Yeah, so like- I can just tell we're about to get on an American topic. You know, this is gonna, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I feel like America's gonna come close I, I wasn't there. even thinking about I wasn't thinking about I, I, wasn't I, thinking I was already that. thinking about Con- it. Connor was just like, <laughs> I, I, I feel up. it, I feel it. My, my instinct is okay, telling go me go to go shit on, on America. Why is your brain like all the time <laughs> just, just like, ready to reload? <laughs> <laughs> like, sorry, sorry, go ahead. I'll, I'll just carry on. <laughs> if it naturally goes that way, I'll naturally go that way. Okay, no, like I, there was a point I, I feel like where you could just put any shit in your body and you could just, not feel any like after effects at all. It would just like go away after a while. But now like I have gotten to a point where for example, I try to keep a healthy sleep schedule because mm. if I don't get a healthy sleep schedule, I just feel like shit. Well, and yeah. I don't know, I don't, I don't I just feel like there was a point when I didn't care about a sleep schedule and it didn't matter to and like discover my- discover sleep for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think a sleep schedule, you know, when you've got shit to do, that's when that's it, matters. right? Yeah, that's yeah. it. When you got shit to do and you want to be productive, mm. like not like waking up late actually affects that. And I'm just yeah. like, yo, um, I never thought about this when I was a uni student because I did everything at four a.m. in the morning and yeah. I still got a pass in grades. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, why, that's why I'm jealous of YouTubers who get cancelled. You know, they just get like they just get to take a break. They just get to like fuck off for four <laughs> months. You know what I mean? Like they just can stop benefits doing. to getting cancelled. You get a sleep schedule. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, fuck off, man. You cancelled him. He gets to take a four month uh, like paid vacation. His videos are still getting views. What are you on about? Like this, this man, this is gonna come back, come back in five months. David, David Dobrik got two month vacation. That's all he got. This is bullshit. So what's what it? What is the right amount of time for like a YouTuber cancel break? Then? <laughs> I, I don't know, mate. But the more, the more, the more. When I saw David Dobrik and he came back, zero repercussions. His views came, his video that he came back with yeah. got the same amount of views. Dislikes to, to likes are amazing. Mm. He got amazing likes. Yeah. You know, I'm like, this man got a fucking month vacation. This is bullshit. And he got he got free articles about him. He can get verified now on Twitter. <laughs> I'm kidding. He wasn't already. As if he wasn't yeah, already. Yeah. But, but I was like, what the he fuck? He can get double verified. There was like no no. There was like no repercussions. And I'm like, wow. What what what? What point is it? Like, damn, getting cancelled doesn't look too too bad right now. I mean, I, <laughs> like, don't if, ask for it. Like, yeah, if, if, if Logan Paul can literally come back from showing a dead body, I feel like anyone can come yeah. back. You know, it's. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's oh, no, kind I, of the I, truth, I you just, know. You're just, you're yeah, Mr. I, I anime said the same thing. <laughs> oh no, no. Oh, God. Joey! Oh, Joey. I can come back. Oh this. God! Oh God, Joey! Joey finna get cancelled right now. <laughs> what for uh, telling the truth? That was, that was a joke. Joey said a joke is a joke. Please don't cancel Joey. <laughs> uh, no, but I was just thinking about it because you saying that like, oh, um, I, my mom made ve- many jumps in logic there. Um, because you were saying, oh yeah, well you got shit to do. But when you, mm. you know, when you 
well, you, as YouTubers, you always have shit to do. There's, there's no vacations. You can't just take a month off. If yeah. you, if you Pe so people take a month off for a mental health break, <laughs> which is like, I say it with inverted commas because it's kind of become a cliche now, even though it's very important and YouTubers is, is. do yeah. fucking need it. But you know, it's sad because if you get canceled, you almost get a better vacation because there's people still talking about you while you're gone. And people like searching about you and making videos about you. Like, I know that sounds awful and you know, it's not great, but like you are still getting way more traffic yeah. than you would be just yeah. taking a break, right? So if you do something kind of semi, semi bad, you know, just something that's like, <laughs> to do something light, you know, just, just do something like, oh, just, I don't know, just fart on a dog or something. I don't know, just so, something that's like not too, you know, bad. Fart on a dog. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What's something that you can, you'll get backlash for, but isn't really that bad, that you can just come back from in a month, you know what I mean? And then you'll get Give like- Give your cat vodka. <laughs> yeah, I literally did that. She yeah. was perfectly fine, yeah, you know? Yeah. Starting to think I should get a pet. <laughs> I'm kidding, that's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. This is a trash taste getting cancelled speed run. Yeah. What can we get well, no, I just for? thought about it and I was like, hold on a second. All these people just get like basically paid vacation. This is bullshit. <laughs> I mean, I think it's like different severities. Yeah, the people like get like quite severe. Yeah, it's mm. quite bad. But I'm noticing more and more, a lot of them just, if they haven't really done anything criminal, mm -hmm. They just kind of like bounce back super easily. I mean, there are some people who did shoot oh, criminal. Yeah, well, that's still David, yeah, David yeah, right? Dobrik's thing was kind of criminal to be fair, let's be honest. Yeah, it was uh, It was kind of criminal. I mean, it's it not... put, endangered someone's life. Yeah. <laughs> came back all right yeah. with it. Like, it just amazes me. It's like, it's like a, Jesus Christ, like a cult. Yeah, but then there's like Crazy. examples like EDP 455 or whatever. <laughs> yeah, and he, he's, he's yeah. definitely not coming that back. That man and, is never coming back. I mean, back. he's trying real hard <laughs> to come <laughs> back though. EDP was a YouTuber who uh, got caught trying to meet up with 14 year olds. Yeah. You know? And, uh, Didn't and he like try to start his own website or something? Yeah, he did. Did he actually? Yeah, yeah he did. Because he, he got his YouTube banned and then uh -huh. he was like, finna go to Facebook. You know it's banned And then Facebook his Facebook banned got banned. Yeah, Facebook banned him. And so he's like, finna start my own website. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's trying really hard, man. But yeah, the, the, the main point of this whole me going on this tangent was that, uh, yeah, I feel like, yeah, as YouTubers, you don't really get a break. I know we're complaining, oh, oh boo hoo us. Uh, who cares? I mean, we have easy jobs, so mm -hmm. whatever. But. I mean, it's, you know, we don't really get like set vacations, which sucks. Uh, mm. And I kind of miss, you know, one thing I really do miss doing is just being able to start two weeks off, just play video games. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. catch up with shit. Like I don't even want to go places anymore. Like I, cause I travel anyway on like weekends yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. I find three days here and there. And that's, that's fun, but it feels like you're still doing something. Mm. But I just want that, that I miss that feeling of like, I'm going to take two weeks off Catch up to all the movies, catch up to all the manga, mm -hmm. just, catch, yeah. just play all video games, you know? Maybe might yeah. start Persona, probably won't. Just buy it, just look at it. Not, yeah, so know, many games, so many games in my backlog that I just want to play. Like yeah. the new Mass Effect remaster got released and I'm just like, I want to play that. But I haven't, going even, to. I haven't even played Persona 5 Royal yet. And yeah. fuck it, fuck knows where I'm going to get the time to do that. Yeah. I, yeah. I now have two wish lists. I have the wish list where I will actually use the thing and the wish list where, this is just a wish list where it would be nice, but I won't use it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the canceled wish list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause like you said, you had a day the other day where you just woke up and you did nothing and it was amazing. Yeah, right? I kind of just woke up one day and I was like, well, I don't really have any like videos to work on. Mm. I don't really have any like other side projects to work on. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a power move. Yeah. Not do anything, <laughs> like not do anything with her. I didn't even like check my phone that day. I was like, not nah, phone turning off. I'm just gonna do shit around the house and just hang out. And I yeah. was like, yeah. damn, is this what like a weekend feels for every other person? <laughs> <laughs> like I'm literally experiencing a weekend for the first time in my life. I was like, oh my God, this is, I should do this more often. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. Like I, I think for us, especially the last few months have just been super fucking busy with yeah. us building this set and having to like film a bunch of episodes to get ahead. I remember we had like what like this two week period where it was like, we finished building the set yeah. and then we filmed a trash taste episode every day for like, yeah. it, it was like <laughs> we had a recording session with either trash taste or like a Netflix shoot yeah. or some kind of some kind of other live stream every day for like two weeks without any breaks on weekends yeah. or anything. That and was I, brutal. That was like, I was I was like close to burnout yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do film my schedule up on purpose. Yeah. Like, uh, I'm, I'm jealous of you, right? I'm jealous of you the most because yeah. you, you view streaming as a downtime. Yeah. I'm just like, I, 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 wish, I, wish, I wish my downtime could be work. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could get paid for my downtime. I wish I could be paid for my downtime. I just enjoy it. And that's like, people always complain at me like, oh, make a stream schedule. I'm like, nah, bro. Cause I just, I just do it whenever I want. But I, st I stream often, like yeah. around the same times. But people are like, you have yeah, to make a stream schedule. Yeah, why do you schedule? a stream schedule? You literally stream like, what, three or four times a week? Yeah, because I, I, I think to myself, I most of the time, whether I decide to stream is normally on the day. Mm -hmm. And that's normally like if 
I've worked too much or maybe I want to just chill out, mm. you know, maybe I've got too much work to do. So I don't, I don't want to do it because the moment I commit it to a schedule is when it's work. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. If, if I say I have to stream it this day, it's work. Yeah. yeah. And then that's why I'll, I won't start having fun. So. Well, I mean, like, I guess for you, it's like good because you have that one game that you can stream, which you also just play casually. I, yeah, I think camera. I think when you're- cause Chess, I'm, right? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. well, it, is, it is right now, but like, I'm, you know, I'm like, so, I mean, I guess talking about streams. Pro probably why, why, uh, by the time this is out, you would have found out the winner of the tournament arc too, which we are currently being yeah, part of. Yeah, well, we, uh, cause we are recording these in advance cause uh, yeah. me and Ghana plans to go back to the UK as we've mentioned. So uh, yeah, we're quite far ahead right now, but yeah, we're in the middle of the chess tournament. So we've been playing a lot of chess recently, which yeah. I've been really enjoying. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it is, I think when you are streaming, it is very helpful to have at least one game that you can come back to when you're like running out of ideas. I think, I think that's what I'm currently trying to find right now yeah. is that one game where I'm just like, the problem, the problem is my one game that I've just played a lot. is just like not very popular. Yeah. And, when, <laughs> and whenever I play, oh, everyone, yeah. And oh. whenever I play, everyone's just like, oh, he's obviously doing this because it's a sponsored stream. And I'm just like, no, I just, just enjoy the game. No one fucking plays this well, game, but I, I, I'll play it. I did notice that when I started <laughs> playing Apex, uh, because I, I, Apex is probably the game I stream, I've streamed most, mm -hmm. um, that my viewership was quite much, considerably lower than normal. But yeah. I was like, well, no, fuck it. I like this game. I'm going to keep playing it. And then after time, it actually like went up to the point where if I stream new games now, it's normally lower than Apex. Yeah. Because mm. I've built up like the following. Well, I feel like so you, you, got, have to, you have to stick through. You have yeah. to stick I, through I, I feel like you also got very lucky as well because the Apex did just have a massive boom in general yeah. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. of like, Every VTuber under the sun Apex playing Raid it. Apex Shadows, yeah. Yeah, Apex uh, Raid of Shadows. Yeah, yeah. 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 Raid of Shadows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. I, that was not even intentional. I was just yeah. playing it, and then I started seeing every VTuber's playing. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> See, like, that's not going to happen with my comfort game, because my yeah. comfort game is about 30 years old. What's your comfort game? Like, any Final Fantasy game. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm just like, like I can't, I can't, like, fucking stream Final Fantasy VI, even though it's one of my favorite games of all no. time, because yeah. no one's going to fucking watch it, and yeah. it sucks, you know? Well, would you even want to stream your comfort games? I mean, yeah, because I think like, again, it, it's like Apex with Connor where it's like, it's just a comfort game, right? Like yeah. you don't necessarily have to see it as work or like you don't have to necessarily be like entertaining and wacky and goofy and, you know, yeah. try and hold an audience, right? Like you can just play a game casually yeah. as you would normally do and people would just be there to watch you play it, right? Yeah. yeah. It's different. It's it's very different to my normal streams as well. I'd say depends on the what I'm doing. Like you're a lot more quiet during your Apex stream. Yeah, right? definitely. Yeah, because I'm I'm focusing on the game. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like I talk in between stuff happening. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so it's yeah depends what's going on. Mm. But normally. Yeah. But that's why like I like talking to Japanese people on there because it's fun. Yeah. Like I'm trying to find more things that I want to watch. Um. That's that's like that's I I feel like I'm I'm more of like I, I like doing passive things rather than active things a lot of time in my downtime. Mm. Like the other day, uh, like a few days ago, I ended up watching all of Loki for like the the new the new oh, Marvel series. It, yeah, it's, it's actually really fucking good. Oh, and yeah. like I don't I'm not that invested in the Marvel franchise, so I was just like, oh, I'll just put on one episode just, mm, mm. just see what it's about and i just ended up binging the entire thing and i was just like <laughs> this is fucking amazing i because it, it was only six episodes but every episode is 40 minutes long so i basically just binged an entire season of anime just that's that's how i think of things you know? but it wasn't anime but it wasn't <laughs> anime and i'm just like damn how why can't i do this with anime anymore <laughs> Fuck, yeah. man that's i miss that so much I'm so busy now where i like dread good stuff coming out because i'm like Fuck, I, gotta yeah. find I gotta find time to watch this now see if only you could like Watch Loki on Twitch, right? <laughs> just use that as your downtime just, and just, just have people just, watching just you have watch, watch parties. Yeah. Honestly, I would love to have watch parties with like different things I'm watching. Yeah. But obviously DMCA shit. Mm. Obvious, reasons, yeah. Obvious reasons. Can't do that. Yeah. Um, but like because like I, I know Sydney, her her downtime thing is that she watches horror movies and I don't know how she finds so many fucking horror movies to watch. I didn't know this many horror movies existed. She watches at least three new horror movies every week. Dude, at like- At least. The, the, the cesspool of horror movies is like never ending. It's like, actually insane. I, Cause I was never, I, I'm like, I was never big into horror movies. I don't really like horror movies. Um, and I, I assume I you guys aren't big fans either, because none of it showed up on our three by threes. No, I don't like know. Not, not a single one. There's some, there's some good ones, but it's, it's like, it's not my favorite genre. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Um, but she somehow finds so oh, oh, many the new ones. Huh? Shining's really good. Shining's good. I, I, I like The Shine. I like, there's only a few horror movies that I really like. Mm. Shining's one of them. I've really, because like my, my taste in horror movies is really niche, I think, because I like 
kind of Lovecraftian horrors because mm. I don't like the usual like you know jump scares, ghosts, paranormal well, stuff. That's the problem mm. is that so much horror is jump scares now. Yeah, I it mean, is. It is because it's, it's cheap and mm. easy to rely. Yeah, on. that's. I think that's why I'm such a big fan of like Jinji Ito and stuff yeah. like that because it's it's really like the horror that I like is really just the ones that really unsettle me, like the macabre horror. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <coughs> no, I, I'm exactly like that. Like the kind of like Asian horror is like definitely mm -hmm. more my taste in horror because yeah. like again, it's like you see like you know you watch one paranormal. Activity, you've basically seen them all. How right? the fuck did Paranormal Activity get so big? It's because I, Steven Spielberg greenlit it. He literally <laughs> is that true? Yeah. So I, I actually read up on it because I had the exact same thought. I was like, I saw fucking the trail of a Paranormal Activity seventy three, and I was like, how? Yeah. Why are there so many? But, but I remember when it when it came out, I was in school, and ev everyone was like, this is the scariest movie ever. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So scary. Yeah, I know, right? And I, I was just everyone was like shitting their pants over it. I remember because yeah. I was in university at the time, and so I was like, all right, I'll see what the hype's about because. Mm. Uh, back then, my roommates had a watch party, and then we watched uh, Paranormal Activity, the first one. Mm. And I, everything, everyone was like jumping at just like the fucking closet opening, and I'm just like, I can literally see the fucking string being used to open this fucking door. How is this scary? What is going on? <laughs> one uh, remote press. <laughs> yeah. uh, I watched uh, one that I thought wasn't bad. Was it The Invisible Man? It wasn't that bad, actually. Is that what it's called? Oh, The Invisible Man. Yeah, the one that. about the Invisible, Invisible, Invisible Man. Man. That is yeah, it. So, so, yeah. Sid Sydney showed me that one. I it like was, that one. It was alright. Yeah, I quite like that one. Yeah. I watched it in the cinemas. Pretty good. I enjoyed that one. I like um I watched the other day. I finally watched um what is it, Hereditary? Oh. Oh, yeah. how was that one? Because I, I, I missed out on it when it first came out. So I, I kind of missed the initial hype on yeah, it because I was good. like, eh, Western Horror, it's whatever for me. Yeah. But then I think Felix showed me Midsummer, <laughs> which is done by the same guy, Ari Aster. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, this is very creepy, but also kind of cool and experimental. So I was like, yeah. all right. Oh, well, I heard Hereditary was pretty good. I watched it. It's uh, it's weird. I don't. I yeah. wouldn't. I almost wouldn't even call it a horror film. It's mm -hmm. like, I don't know. It's you know what it feels like. It feels like if David Lynch made a horror film. Yeah. You know. Okay. Where it's like it's it's scary. But as, it's also as, like, as we established I, I in the like previous three by three, Joey, the big art snob. <laughs> yeah, I'm David the art Lynch. Snob. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I feel like you just, to make a good horror movie, you have to be fucked up. Yeah, well, yeah. Pretty, 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 <laughs> yeah. You have to just be completely fucked yeah. up. Yeah. To make any horror content, I feel you need to be fucked <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah, maybe. In some aspect. Actually, uh, me and Sydney watched. Uh, we we had uh, we had a night the other day that we just kind of like binge part of like the Final Destination series. <laughs> And so the, the reason okay. for that was because I kind of I kind of remembered my very first. As a teenager, I loved those films. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember the very first time I watched Final Destination, and was it was actually in school, right? Right. Um. So I, th I think it was like I think it was like middle school at the time. So I was like I think around th 12, 13 years old, mm. and I don't know if the same thing for Australia, but you know, like at the end of term in mm. school. Right, it's kind of like a free for all, and the teachers. It's kind of like that period where it's like the last two classes of the year or something. Teachers just let you do, let you do whatever the fuck you want, right? Yeah. Was that true in Australia? Yeah, I, <coughs> I definitely. Think. It depends on the school, but yeah, I, yeah. I think most schools it was kind of just like, I'm going on break in fucking three days. Yeah, just whatever. Yeah, yeah, so it was just like it's just like in the school I was in, you just had a week period where you just basically basically go to class and every teacher would put on a different film or just like- Just roll in the no. TV, Yeah, just, right? just, roll, just roll in the TV and everyone would watch a different film. And like fucking 90% of the time, it was Shrek. It was yeah. fucking- okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was just always I was, Shrek. I was about to say, okay. we watched Shrek like every year, yeah. Yeah. at least twice. Yeah, okay, I, 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 good, good to know that that was just a nationwide <laughs> thing. It's that time of year again. Yeah. Okay, it's like end of year, all right. I guess it's Shrek again. And I, I remember this one class, um, <laughs> one of one of my classmates brought in a DVD, yeah. right? Because he, we were just, we, uh, because the teacher would ask, what does everyone want to watch? And so this guy, Samuel, he, he, he brings out the DVD and he brings out Final Destination. And mm. he was like, this is, this is a film I think the entire class would want to watch. <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, sure. How Anything. old are you? I, th I think we were like 12 at the time. <laughs> <laughs> that is scary for I, a 12 I, year old. I, I, I had not heard of Final Destination at the time, right. but we were like, yeah, sure. Like, cause like, you know, anything to get us away from Shrek or whatever, <laughs> or, or, whatever or whatever the usual films right. we were watching, yeah, yeah. right? So he was like, miss this. I, I think the, the classroom would watch, would want to watch this. And nobody kind of like opposed it. So, yeah. and the teacher had never heard of the film before. Oh my God. Okay. So she was That's like, dangerous. so she was like, this boy just had this DVD on him. I, I, th I think he knew what he was doing, right? Yeah. And so, um, so the film starts off in Final Destination and characters are always like, it's, it's, I don't know what the rating was like back then, 
my characters were, al were already swearing but i think in pg films in like the uk even if you have like one or two swear words it can still be skewered towards like the lower ratings if it's mm. just like one or two swear words i think so yeah yeah um so like characters so i remember the the opening scene where they like get on the plane and people start arguing or whatever um it's it's kind of sus because you can hear people obviously swearing yeah. <laughs> and the teacher's just like uh samuel is this is, is this suitable for this age range? And it's like, yeah, miss, don't worry. It's just the opening scene. Don't worry, miss. Yeah. Like, just don't worry about it. And she's like, okay, okay. And so I remember the, the opening scene is where like, I, I think it's it's where the plane crashes. That's the first final destination. And yeah. I remember, so, so, uh, so a bunch of 12 year olds are just watching, uh, watching this plane take off. And then obviously um, the plane starts to crash uh the the wing snaps and everyone's fucking screaming it's terrifying yeah. right in the scene and then you see like blood splatter and then you see someone getting burned alive <laughs> and immediately <laughs> immediately like the fuck the teacher gets up aggressively like aggressively gets off to the tv doesn't even doesn't even switch it off unplugs the tv <laughs> and goes samuel get outside now <laughs> and uh that was my very first experience at Final Destination. Absolutely, Just Chad Samuel. <laughs> he was like, he probably walked out. Was like, <laughs> worth it. <laughs> they, they, I remember one of them put like, uh, it was an art class. I remember this, and like the teacher was not tech savvy at all. <laughs> yeah. right? And uh, he put meat spin on all the PCs, <laughs> and then took just unplugged all the mouse and keyboards. And he, the teacher was having a mental breakdown. Didn't understand why he couldn't just like, he was like fucking hammering the keyboard. Yeah. Like, why was it turning <laughs> off? And then he started hitting the monitor. Then trying to turn the monitor off. And he don't even think he knew how to turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. And then he, he didn't know how to turn it off. He didn't even think of unplugging it or anything. So this was still playing the whole time. <laughs> and then goes and gets another teacher to come right, in. Right. And he's like, why didn't you turn it off? And he's like, oh, I didn't know how. <laughs> he just presses the button to turn it off. Classic meat spin. <laughs> it's like meat spin. And there's like these poor girls as well. I've never seen this. Don't, don't look it up if you don't know what that is. Because obviously we're all like 12. So yeah. Every yeah, guy yeah, has yeah. seen it. We're all like, yeah, you've seen meat spin. <laughs> it's, if you're a guy and you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was. <laughs> I mean it was like meat spin lemon party. That, oh, that was it, right? Party, lemon party. You didn't know what I didn't know what goatsy right? was. That was, that was <laughs> obviously like a few years past. God, where what was it? You came in the office like what, like a month ago? I was like, I just found out what goatsy is, <laughs> or something, right? And we were like, oh, <laughs> how did you find that out, right? How did you find out? How do you find like out about years? goatsy in 2021? No, you you guys were the ones who told me about it. Were wasn't we? It? Yeah, it was it was like literally a recording a trash taste, and you were just telling. Uh, why was I talking about goats? <laughs> Wait, this was in an episode. No, this wasn't no, in an no, episode. No, no, this no. was like before we started yeah, recording. Yeah, yeah. You didn't know what it was. No, I didn't and know we what like, it was. How did you? How, wait, you know what meat spin was? You didn't know what goatsy was? <laughs> I had to explain to God what goatsy was. <laughs> Please don't look it up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's some it's men spreading his butt cheeks. <laughs> Yeah, but it's, it's it's 2021 okay you, do, you don't need to know what meat spin is or nah. goatsy these are all just like websites lemon party with like people doing horrible things so yeah like yeah. trick people stuff yeah like that. pretty sure you can find way worse stuff on the internet now anyway so oh, yeah of course you do yeah but that, that back back when we were growing up this was just like the shit you'd like show your mates like fucking what, like, what else? hey there's this really cool thing if you google meat spin oh uh, two girls one cup <laughs> oh <laughs> I mean, Those Two Girls One Cup is still scarring to this day. Yeah. yeah, I remember watching that. Yeah, going going back to horror movies, like I would like to find I, I, a horror movie I really liked. Has anyone seen Annihilation? The one with Natalie Portman. I've in heard it? of that. That sounds so familiar. Yeah. What yeah. happens in this? Uh, so there was the plot breakdown. So the plot breakdown is that um, there's an alien artifact or some artifact from space that crash lands um, somewhere somewhere in the world, obviously, mm. and it creates this kind of force field barrier right mm. and uh you can easily enter the barrier but you can't get any like electrical signals or any like communications oh, yeah. who into else is this, this feature uh this features natalie portman and, and is it hawkeye not no you're thinking of uh arrival that was the one fuck, which i, I really know. like arrival i as heard well. that was good that was good that's not a horror movie though oh i thought it was okay yeah i mean it's just a sci-fi <coughs> oh, okay yeah i just i just wanted more sci-fi stuff which yeah. which i think is why i was really, really okay, into okay. loki and so <clears throat> and so um, they, they can't get any, <coughs> sorry, they can't get any uh, signals in there, so they don't know what's going on in there. Mm. And every team that they've sent in there just never finds their way out. So mm. they, they, they they literally don't know what's yeah. going on in there. And this force field is slowly, slowly expanding. So eventually it will cover the whole earth. So they need to kind of stop it, it right? Yeah, they yeah. need to kind of figure it out. 
And so they send this team of scientists to go investigate what's inside there. And I kind of won't spoil it from exactly. there because a, a lot that of sounds good. a lot of weird things happen. And mm. it's not like it's not so. What I liked about it is it's. It was just like really, it's really terrifying, but not because of any jump scares. Just some of the ideas within this, you know, with some of the ideas of what happens to the people within this circle are just like really unsettling and really mm. terrifying. It, it, it is very much like a kind of like Jinji Ito ideas where it's mm. just really weird kind of ideas that you don't, you kind of have to have like, I don't, I don't know what kind of mind you need to come up with these <laughs> things, uh, but it's that I'm, I, I would like more horror like that.